Hello believers, praise the Lord and hallelujah. It's yet another wonderful time for us to be connecting uh, with the word of God today. Uh, my name is Robert Mwando and I am glad to be bringing and sharing the word of God with you today. Today I would like to share with you on the subject that I have called the fruit in this season uh, where so many people are asking questions, how do you discern the truth from what is not true? We need to have the spirit of discernment. And in this teaching, I intend to show us that discernment is something that God has given to us because he has given us scriptures that guide us to be able to tell the truth from what is not true. And uh, my choice of text today is Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 and verse 20. And also we will look at Matthew chapter 21, verse 19. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 says, You will recognize them by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? And verse 20 says, thus you will recognize them by their fruits. We examine the subject of fruit regarding our Christian work today. And in the Old Testament, the root word fruit appears a hundred times in scripture. These include words such as fast fruits, fruitful, unfruitful, and fruit itself. Whereas in the New Testament, uh, a word search in the New Kingdom's version will show you that it appears 76 times. In the natural realm, when we see a mango tree, we can tell by its physical outlook that it is a mango tree. We are able to differentiate trees according to their kind by looking at the leaves or smelling their scent or probably by feeling the texture of the tree bark. This is a natural or the kind of way that we can tell things apart. This is different in the spiritual realm. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20, which we have already referred to, says, Therefore by their fruits you shall know them. Now Jesus was not merely interested in seeing a tree, without fruit. We see that in Matthew chapter 21 verse 19. We know this because in the previous verse, verse 18, it's recorded that he was hungry, meaning that his interest in the fig tree was the fruit. The leafy fig, the leafy fig tree gave an impression to the natural eye and it seemed a viable option for Jesus' natural need, which was hunger. The tree was not cast for the lack of fruit, rather for the pretense that the leaves gave. The fruit must be tested, just as true faith in the Lord must be tested. The tree structure generally has the roots, stem, branches, and leaves. The leaves are what we see most commonly. We seldom, paint, we seldom pay attention to the branches. Some attention may be accorded to the stem, especially if it is uh, great in stature and structure. No one ever gives any attention to the roots of the tree. The leaves are the superficial representation of the life in a tree. Yes, it is important to give due attention to the leaves, but much more attention must be given to the unseen part of the tree, which are the roots. Now, here are some nuggets for us to hang on to. Being leafy does not mean being useful to the body of Christ. The church today, especially in Africa, is so vibrant. As we build bigger and bigger cathedrals, we have more and more homeless people in our streets. As we bring more and more harvest to the house of the Lord, 
we have more and more hungry people in our villages and neighborhoods. We have more and more people professing the name of the Lord, while more and more vulgar and disrespectful language is heard in our precincts. More and more weddings, yet we proportionally have more and more broken marriages in, and homes. Leaves may connote to church numbers, the miracles performed, and the many prophecies given and even fulfilled. The number of prayer or church meetings you, are, you have attended are all good, but did they contribute to your fruitfulness? Ask yourself this question. Being leafy is not what our Lord and Master is interested in. He's interested in the fruit. Nugget number two to take note of. The fruit reveals the root. Notice that no matter the amount of leaves without fruit, the whole tree was cast and withered. In fact, for a tree to be considered completely withered, the root must also be withered. In Matthew chapter 21 and verse 19 that we have seen, the entire tree withered, meaning total judgment. I believe the Lord has given each one of us an opportunity to bear fruit. But when he returns, those without fruit will be totally judged. The judgment will be based on fruitlessness, not how much leaves we displayed. The roots represent the value systems, the moral compass, and ultimately the foundational laws of life. The psalmist in chapter 1, verse 1 to 6, describes a blessed righteous man and compares him with one who is ungodly. He applies the analogy of a tree planted by the rivers of water in verse 3 and then refers to the fruit before mentioning the leaves. When he describes the ungodly man in verse 4, he says, they are not so. Among the many things that the tree planted by the water, waters is, referring to the blessed righteous man, include, one, not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Two, not standing in the paths of sinners. Number three, talks about not sitting in the seat of scoffers. And number four, taking delight in the law of the Lord. Number five, he talks about meditating on the law of the Lord day and night, being planted by the water side. Number six, he talks about bringing forth fruit in season and out of season. And number seven, not withering. And number eight, prospering. The ungodly, on the other hand, is like chaff which the wind drives away. And secondly, he cannot stand in judgment. Mark the word, can't stand. It speaks of weakness. It speaks of a lack of strength. It points to a weak foundation. Let's say it points to a problem with the roots. Weak roots will affect the entire tree, the leaves, and consequently the fruit. So you see, the psalmist is comparing an ungodly man to a tree that has weak foundations or weak roots. That means that um, any believer who wants to stand strong must have a good foundational teaching that gives him a firm grip on the roots. Nugget number three that I would like to say and share with you today is that we need to notice that in our Christian walk, when we talk of the fruit, Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 is the complete picture. It is a fruit basket. The fruit must be complete. You see, in Galatians chapter 5, 22, it speaks about the fruit. 
and not the fruits. So for my illustration today, I have used what I have called the fruit basket. And in the fruit basket, you have an assortment of fruits. But that is what makes this basket complete. You cannot have one and not the other. You cannot say that, well, I have self-control, but I lack goodness. And that's why, as a believer, we must work on the complete fruit. So we see that the Bible uh, continues to teach us about the fruit. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 8 and 10, we read, Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. And verse 10 says, And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruits is cut down and thrown into the fire. The fruit indeed reveals the root. A universal spiritual principle is stated by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, seen in Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Before any tree starts to bear fruit, it must take root, a holy root, holy branches, equals good fruit. A few of the many scriptural affirmations relating to this subject follow. If the root is holy, so are the branches. We see that in Romans chapter 11, verse 16. And remember that Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. In John chapter 15, verse 5. We should be rooted and grounded in love and if we are rooted in love, we will be able to comprehend, to know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge. I have paraphrased Ephesians chapter 3 verse 17. Paul here is reaffirming Jesus' declaration that if our hearts are pure, we will be able to see, to perceive, and to understand God. Paul declares that we should be rooted and built up in Christ, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. And then we see that John the Baptist declared that when a tree does not bear good fruit, the axe is laid at the root of the tree, and the tree is thrown into the fire, in Matthew chapter 3. The root represents the heart of man, Today, believers will say that God looks at the heart whenever they are faulted for the visible bad fruit. It is your lack of good fruit that will bring God's judgment on you. When people see the faults and point them out, they are not judging you. It is God's way of rebuking those that he loves so you make right the wrong and escape the acts at your root, which will be the irreversible judgment. The tree with roots that be evil may have a semblance of righteousness, but its fruit, when tested and tested, will reveal its very kind. Bad root, bad fruit. Here I list some bad roots hidden in people's lives unforgiveness and judgment against others, inner vows, trauma, curses of several different kinds, word curses spoken to, to you or about you, word curses spoken by you against others, generational sins and iniquity, occultism sins including witchcraft, pacts, drugs and alcohol, soul ties, demonization, all these point to a bad root. Let me state emphatically that if you find yourself struggling in manifesting good fruit as stated below, which I have just enlisted, what is this good fruit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. 
If you are always overcome by the lusts of the flesh, if you oft lose control of yourself, or you find yourself speaking unkind words about others, or even about yourself, you struggle with telling the truth consistently and always impatient, you need the ministry of cutting bad roots to set you free. However, I hasten to add that being prayed for in deliverance is not a magic shortcut to spiritual maturity. The bad roots in people's lives must be uprooted, but at the same time we must be rooted in the word of God, according to Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Uproot hate, become rooted in love. Uproot impurity, become rooted in purity. Uproot immorality, become morally upright. Uproot outbursts of anger, become rooted in outbursts of songs of joy. Uproot envy and jealous, become rooted in kindness. I could go on and on and on. In the light of the scriptures, we have actually seen that we know the kind of fruit you are bearing if your response towards scriptures that point out your faults have become uncomfortable. It is a signal that your root might be bad and therefore you ought to become uncomfortable with that root. Put the axe to it by yourself or by the help of a bad root counselor and start to get rooted in good works while being enfolded in the grace of God. So today we have basically looked at the fruit. And every person will be known by the kind of fruit they bear. I pray that by the grace of God, you will be a bearer of good fruit. And if there be any roots of evil, may the Lord by his spirit help you to undo the bad roots and get rooted in the word of God which bears good fruit. God bless you.